So, um, and, and if you need to, to corroborate any of my story and like be like, is that really true? You can talk to Macy because she's been to my house and uh, she, she knows this, like my childhood home. Um, my parents and, 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 and I, our family, we live in the same house. Like they bought, they bought that house in 1995. And I was born in 96. So I've lived, and they haven't moved. So I've been in this house literally since I was born. When I go back home to, like, visit my family, which is weird because you're visiting your home. Anyway, when I go back home to visit, I literally sleep in my bed from when I was a kid. They obviously redid the Toy Story sheets and things like that. But, like, I sleep in my same bed. So if you need to corroborate any of this story with Macy, she can tell you about my house and, and, and about what it is. Because I have the most creaky house, not creepy, but creaky. It's the most loud house I have ever had or ever been to in my life. And Macy, Macy can, can, tell, can tell you it is very very creaky. It's super loud, and it's two stories, so the stairs are the worst part of the house, because every step is super loud, and what makes it worse is my brother and I both lived on the second story, the, 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 the upstairs portion of the house, and we used to play video games all night, like every other teenager, right? And um, except there was no bathroom upstairs. You can already kind of see where this is going. So we used to have to run a, 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 a risk-reward analysis on going to the bathroom when we would hang out all night. Because my dad goes to bed, no joke, he'll go into bed at 7.30, and he's probably out at like 8 or 8.30. Just, he's, he sleeps, and he wakes up early, and he works hard, and, he, and he, he's super tired, and that's just what he does. So he, he loves his sleep, and he doesn't want to be woken up. You have this creaky house with a staircase that is so loud and to make matters worse, he's a light sleeper. <laughs> so I'm not joking. Literally, like what Shannon said, we would have to mission impossible going down the stairs. I can't tell you how many different ways I've tried to go down the stairs. I would try to go on the left side near the wall. I would try to literally slide down the rail. I, I like tried so many things to not wake up my dad because without fail, if we, uh, if, we, if we were too loud coming down the stairs, if we ran down the stairs or something, for sure he would wake up. We'd go to the bathroom, and he would, sure enough, you'd hear him kind of get out, and he would shuffle with his bare feet. He would shuffle down the hallway, and then he'd go, what are you doing up? Like, I had to pee. Like, <laughs> and uh, he just did that all the time. And, and there were some nights where we would crack the code, we would be able to get down the stairs, we would be able to use the restroom, and he wouldn't wake up, and that was always so satisfying. But then you had to flush the toilet. You're like, well, if I go upstairs and he wakes up, like, he can't yell at me, so whatever. So, <laughs> so we would flush the toilet and run upstairs. It was a, that was a win for us. But like I said, like I said, there was a ton of times where, sure enough, he would wake up. And he would shuffle down. He'd go, what are you guys doing up? It's 2 a.m. It's 3 a.m. It's 1 a.m. It's 11 o'clock. It's 8.30. What are you doing up? And you're like, Dad, come on. Come on now. Anyway, there's always that risk-reward. Do you guys have situations like that where you're running the risk-reward? You're like, is it worth it? Is it not? Uh, do you have things like that in your life where you're running the, the, uh, the, the risk-reward? Yeah? Okay, glad I'm not the only one. We're, uh, we're going to be talking about Esther, who kind of ran that same risk-reward. We're going to be in Esther chapter 4, verse uh, 10. We're going to read uh, through that story. But before we do, there's some context that you guys have to know, because you can't just jump in the middle of a book. Like, we're in Esther chapter 4. Imagine going to chapter 4 of some random book and trying to read it. Like, it's really hard to do that, so you guys need some background. So what's happened so far? Well, there's an old queen who is with the king of Persia. His name is Xerxes. Everybody say Xerxes. 
Xerxes. And um, she made her husband angry. And in that time when you made the, uh, the king angry as the queen, that just meant you weren't the queen anymore. So there was a search to have a new queen. And boy, did they have some characters. They had lots of people. Actually, I have a video uh, from VeggieTales that, uh, that explains how hard this search. If you guys want to go ahead and play that. How many of you guys know, like, if that was your search for a queen, uh, you got to keep looking, <laughs> right? That's not, not much hope, right? So finally, so again, VeggieTales is just awesome. If you haven't watched VeggieTales, go on YouTube. You can find, like, all of them. It's pretty awesome. So anyway, um, so that's kind of what, what was happening. They basically had a talent show. Who could be the better queen? Who, who could replace this queen? Who could come up? And so that's what they did. They choose uh, the, the royal, the, the king and, and, his, and his committee. They choose this girl named Esther. And she is a Jewish girl in Persia. And she doesn't tell anybody that she is Jewish because there's a problem. Haman is the king's right-hand man. And Haman wanted to kill all of the Jews in Persia. So how many people know if you're a Jewish queen and the king's right-hand man wants to kill all the Jews, that can be an issue, right? So he, he, he actually even wanted to kill the king himself so that he could make sure that all the Jews were exterminated. Like, that's how far this dude was going to go. And Esther had a cousin named Mordecai. Mordecai was her cousin. And she is talking super close with him. And he's like, hey, you got to do something. Like, you're the queen. And that's where we're going to pick up uh, right here, actually. Um, he, he's, he's saying, hey, you're the queen. You got to do something. You got to go see the king. You got to go talk to him. You got to go figure out what's going to happen. Otherwise, we're going to die. You're going to die. It, it's, it's all death and just not good. And so it says this in um, verse Verse uh, uh, 10 and 11 um, in, uh, in Esther chapter 4. You can turn there or you can read it from here. But it says this. It says, then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, this is basically like a go-between. You guys ever played telephone? It's pretty much what Mordecai and Esther are doing right now. And Esther uh, instructs the, the, this, uh, this go-between and st- uh, s- uh, instructed him to say to Mordecai, get this. All of the king's officials and the, royal, and the people of royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they would be put to death unless the king extends his golden scepter to them and spares their lives. Here's her dilemma, though. Thirty days have passed since I was called to see the king. So there's kind of a, an issue here. Mordecai is like, hey, you got to go talk to the king because otherwise Haman is going to kill all these Jews and, and it's your family. And then when he finds out that you're Jewish, you're not going to be saved just because you're the king or queen. You got to fix this. And she's like, I can't because I can't go into the inner court without being summoned. And he hasn't the king hasn't talked to me in 30 days. It's just kind of crazy even to think, like, try, if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, when you guys get married in the future in, like, 40 years, um, I'm kidding, Uh, when you guys get married, like, imagine going a month without talking to your husband, wife, king, queen, like, it's just wild, right? And so, so Esther is like, nobody can do it, and I can't, I can't be of any help, I'm going to die before I even get to do anything. Because as soon as I open up the door and step into the room, I'm dead. Like, that's the law. There's one point that I want you guys to grab from this already, these, these first two verses of this, and that is this. Risk comes with boldness. Everybody say risk comes with boldness. Comes with boldness. You see, Esther disqualified herself based on the circumstances that were around her because she hadn't been summoned to the inner courts. 
She didn't think she was going to live long enough to even ask the king for mercy. And I can't help but look at her situation and think, man, there are so many times that I disqualify myself based on a circumstance that may or may not be true. How many times do we do that? How many times do we say, well, I can't bring my Bible to school because then people will make fun of me and, and, they'll, and they'll see it. I can't play worship music or Christian music in the car. Trust me, there's good Christian music out there. I can't play Christian music in the car because nobody is going to know and, and, and then I'm going to look weird because nobody knows the music that I listen to. Like, I can't play that. Think of all of the times and all the scenarios you've ran through your head about why you can't do something for God or you can't live a certain way for God based on circumstances that may or may not even be, like, true. Does that happen sometimes? That's what Esther had gotten herself into. But let me tell you something. There, is, there may be a risk with living for Christ. I'm not even saying we, we're, I'm not even saying uh, that, that we're going to endure persecution or anything like that. That may well happen, but, but I'm, not, I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying there might be a risk of, of your popularity or your status or whatever when you live your life for Christ. But risk comes with boldness. When there's a risk, it, it requires you to either cower away or be bold. So let's go ahead and read in these next few, um, let's go ahead and read in these next few verses in uh, 13 through 17 what Mordecai says to her. It's an amazing, an amazing response. It says, he sent back this answer. You guys listening? You guys with me? Okay. He said, he sent back this answer. Do not think because you are in the king's house, for you alone um, of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, release or relief from and deliverance for the Jews will arise. So that's good. Jews will be saved. But it's going to come from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. I want to say that again. It says, who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And then Esther said this to Mordecai as a reply. Go gather together all of the Jews who are in uh, Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, day or night. And I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king. This is awesome. I will go to the king even though it's against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. Guys, I want you to grab onto this amazing interaction between Mordecai and Esther because it is so, so, so powerful. Look, reminders that other people can give you can serve as your motivation. Reminders can become your motivation. Reminders from other people who are saying, hey, get up, go do what you're called to do. They can be your motivation because how many of us know that sometimes it's hard to just live for God sometimes, like on your own? It's hard to, to live that out on your own, and especially when you feel isolated and when you feel broken down and when you feel like nobody else is there with you. You need people who can come alongside of you and say, I believe you can do it. Because that's exactly what Mordecai did for Esther. He, he said, hey, why do you think you're in your royal position? You're in it for this time and for this season. You're here to save us. Here's the good news. God was already going to save the, the Jewish people. But he, he, he reminds Esther and he says, hey, it's either on you or God's going to find somebody else. It's either on you to help us or God is going to find somebody else. And then Esther has this amazing response because she finally accepts the risk of the responsibility of going to, to the king. And she asks everyone in her circles to fast and pray. Guys, we're just coming off of a three-day fast. Let me tell you, if you need something to break in your life, fast and pray and seek the Lord. And I know that doesn't sound fun, and I know it sounds super Christian, and I know it sounds like really dumb. 
But like seriously, if you're battling depression or anxiety or fear or, or worry or whatever, and you want to see that thing taken off, if you would seek the Lord and draw near to him, because that's what Esther was doing. Esther said, hey, I want to be as close to God as I can right now, because if I don't and I go into this, in, into this inner, uh, inner uh, palace, I'm going to die. And so I need the boldness. But it, it, and then she says at the end this amazing thing. If I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. Even if he doesn't do what I know God is going to do, I still believe in him and I still trust him. Can I just tell you we need Mordecai's in our life to remind us of our purpose sometimes? Because sometimes it's so hard to even hold on to it for ourselves. You see, without the reminder of the dire circumstances that Mordecai said of like, hey, this is a big deal and you're going to die too and your family's going to die, like, this is serious. If it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for somebody else coming alongside of Esther and reminding her of her purpose, she might have never moved forward. Because she told him when he asked to, to, to talk to the king. She's like, I can't. He hasn't even summoned me. Like, she was ready to just accept the defeat. And God wants to remind us, whether it's through somebody else or whether it's through his Holy Spirit, whether it's through reading his word, whether it's personally revealed to us, that his plans and his purposes include using us. Because, like I said, the Jewish people could have been saved, and they were going to be saved, regardless of if Esther stood forward or didn't. They were gonna, it was going to work out. But Esther, and, and God wanted to use Esther. And, and, and Mordecai wanted to see her be used in that position. He didn't want to see it go to waste. Guys, I can't tell you how many times, I cannot tell you how many times. I just did it today. I just texted a buddy of mine today. I'm like, hey, man, I need encouragement. I need you to, to let me know that what I'm doing is worth it. I need you to help me see what God has for, for this ministry, and, and I need you to just come and enc encourage me. Can you do that? And he texted me, and he reminded me of why I was called, wh what I was called to do, the, the, the call that I had on my life. He reminded me of my purpose. And it wasn't that I, I wasn't hearing from God. It wasn't that I'm in this far off distant place, but I just needed to reach out to him. And I needed to hear from him, and I needed that encouragement from him. Find Mordecai's in your life who can come and, 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 and come alongside of you and say, you know what? What you're doing is worth it. What you have called on your life is worth it. What you're doing is for the glory of God. You need to keep going. It's so important to have. I want to go ahead. I want to read. Um, the rest of this, well, actually, I'm not, I'm not going to go ahead. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase it just for time. So the rest of the story here, Esther goes into the inner court. Scary, right? Because she could die. She goes in, and he accepts her and says, yep, you can come. That's good. What do you have? And he literally says, hey, whatever you request from me, I'll grant it. Like, whatever, because he recognized that for her to come in without being summoned meant that there was something important that she wanted to talk about. There was something important on her heart, and he recognized that. And so what she did, though, was she looked at and examined kind of the situation, and she said, oh, man, probably not the best thing to beg for my life here. I'm not going to do that. So what she did is she invited the king, and she invited Haman to two dinners, Everybody's like, what's so harmless about a dinner? Well, the second one, she actually told the king, hey, I didn't tell you this, but I'm actually Jewish. And Haman tricked you into writing in a law that would kill the Jews because he wants me dead. And he was like, uh-uh, no, no, sir. So he called Haman in, and Haman actually was the one who was executed. Haman was actually the one who, who, got the, the punishment that he wanted for the Jews. You see, Esther is, is incredible because she saw the risk. She got boldness 
She got bold from, from assessing that risk. She looked at the situation and she said, you know what, I, 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 I need to talk to Mordecai. Mordecai encourages her. It becomes the motivation, that reminder of her purpose becomes the motivation for her to actually go to the king. And can I tell you guys that the reward is worth it? The reward that she had, the ability to, to talk to the king and for him to not only grant her her wish, but then actually take care of the real problem, which was Haman, who was trying to kill everybody. The rewards that we reap when we're bold are like nothing that we can imagine. And guess what? You don't have to be sure when you step out in boldness. When you step out in confidence, when you step out in what God has for you, you don't always have to be sure. Because I'm sure as she opened up that door, she was like, please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. Like, she was probably really freaked out and didn't want to really open up the door, to be honest. But she knew that there was a purpose, and she knew that she was called to, to for such a time as this, like Mordecai said. Sorry about that. There's a spirit. But like... Guys, there may be a risk in living your life for Christ. There may be a risk in giving yourself a, a, a devoted to, to God. Find yourself people who can encourage you when you're looking at the risk and it looks too big. When you're looking at the issue and it looks too, too problematic and it looks like it's too messy, find people who can push you through it and help you go along. Because on the other side of whatever you're looking at that's so big and so problematic and such an issue and such a, a big thing, the other side of it is a reward that you might never even know what it could do. Guys, the story of Esther is so cool. Do you want to know something else really cool about this book? You can read all, all of the chapters. It's a short book. You can read the, the, the remainder of the story. Here's the crazy thing. Do you know how many times God is mentioned in Esther? Eleven. How many times? Z zero. Zero. God is mentioned zero times in Esther. Now, does that mean that God isn't in this book of Esther? No. God is working throughout the entirety of this story. He's preserving his people. He's so, so active in this book. But he's not even mentioned at all. Yet he's so at work. God wants to use you. And the, I, the reason why I say that, the reason why I say that God isn't mentioned is because sometimes you can move forward and, and God feels like he's nowhere. It feels like God hasn't been mentioned in your life. It feels like God is, is not around in your life. Let me tell you, he is, and he's working, and he's moving, and he wants to see you. Surround yourself with people who can push you through whatever you're going through, who can assess the risk and say, you know what, it's worth it. Guys, this story is incredible because this woman steps out and is used by God for something that was way bigger than herself, and it was her position and her time and her season to do it. So tonight, if you guys would just bow your heads and close your eyes. If you would say, tonight, I, I, I want to be used, and, 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 and I'm looking at the situation around me, and I see that I need to, I need to step into what I'm called to do. If that's you, would you raise your hand? You say, I need to step into the season. This is my, my season that I'm built for, and I need to step into it. Thank you. Tonight, if you would say, I, I don't even live my life for, for Christ at all. Like, I don't live my life for God. I don't even know if I believe all of it. Let me tell you that just in the same way that God provided for the, for the Jewish people here, he cared so much about you that he sent his son, living God, Jesus Christ, to come down and take the form of a human body and, and die on a cross for your sins. He did that. That's true. That's a, a legit thing that happened. Tonight, if you would say, Josh, I, I want to give my life to God and I want to live my life and live for something that's bigger than me, something that's, that's, that's 
going to outlast me. If that's you tonight, if you would say, I want to give my heart to the Lord, if you would raise your hand. No, nobody looking, no. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, I pray for every student, every leader, every parent that's under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray that you would be glorified in their lives. I pray that they would be able to look and see uh, the risk. They would look and see the situation. They would surround themselves with people who can encourage them. Lord, and they would trust in you the same way that Esther did. Lord, let us live our lives the same way that she did, with integrity, with, with honor, with, with being able to look at the situation and say, I want to be used. And Lord, if there's anyone tonight under the sound of my voice who has never had a relationship with you, has never uh, cared to, to, to walk with you, Lord, I pray that you would draw their hearts throughout the remainder of this time. Lord, and even if they didn't raise their hand, Lord, I pray that you would just be working and moving to the point that they would be compelled to, to find a leader, find a friend, to, to talk to more about how we live our lives as Christians. Lord, I thank you for the story of Esther. I thank you that you're at work. Even if you're not mentioned, you're at work in this story. Lord, I thank you. You're worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, if uh, we could bring up the lights real quick. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into... Well, hello, and thank you so much for watching our video today. Before you go, if you'd like to stay connected, you can like our Facebook page or follow us on Instagram at LPYouthAZ. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you do not miss another LifePoint Youth video. We also have our midweek service in a podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and you can find it by searching LifePoint Youth Audio Podcast and listen anywhere on the go. For more information regarding service times and events that are happening, visit us at lifepointaz.com youth. Thank you so much again, and have a blessed day.